Well, my name is Molly Lynn Watt, and it's been my name for the last 45 years. However, 12 years previous to that, and in 1963 and 4, most people called me Mary. That April, when the children marched in Birmingham, we folded our lives into a Volkswagen bug, took off south with an international interracial caravan to study what democracy can do by studying the TVA. I ran into a sort of unintentional freedom ride because cafes were fire blasted, we were bumped off the road. Um, there were just there was a lot of intolerance because we were traveling interracially. And so when we arrived at a place where we could all sit at one table, the Highlander Folk School, where Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks both had been involved in taking citizenship training, I was just uh, thrilled to be there. Miles Horton, who was the founder, uh, offered us a summer job creating a camp facility that could be used for voter registration by interracial groups. Thirty campers return, some singing, black and white together. Head to cots in the surplus tents, Bob's night off. He's asleep in the loft with our kids. I listen to the strains of song, listen to the crickets. I do not hear cars pull up on the road, cut motors below the spring. I do not hear boots creep across turf. Suddenly, men in denim overalls burst through darkness. One jeers, we're arresting you. I stand barefoot on the door jam. He nudges my ribs with a gun. I don't budge. No one wears a badge. I say words learned in civics class. A search warrant? He sneers. So you think you got rights? We're swamped, surrounded by a wall of white men pointing guns, crowding us. We're a herd. We are being rousted. My husband is shaking. We are the camp directors. They blame us, spit instigators, shove us to the head of the line. March all 30 along the dirt road into night. My three-year-old grips my hand. My toddler raps on her daddy's chest. The intruders rave. Blood's gonna flow tonight. Negro blood will roll down this mighty mountain. One Birmingham voice sings. We are not afraid. Other campers join in. We are not afraid tonight. We drown out their rants with song. I am no longer shaking. I am singing, walking down the mountain with my family in the middle of the night. It took me a long time before I could talk about it. I actually was so traumatized from taking my kids to jail. Um, I really couldn't talk about it. I felt ashamed. I felt ashamed even though I felt like I was living for my highest principles. I felt I had put my children in harm's way. But my grandchildren ask. They would say, well, why did you take my mother to jail when she was a little girl? <laughs> I try to explain and uh, one of them had me come in to explain to her kindergarten at the Cambridgeport School here in Cambridge. What did Dr. King want? We're studying Dr. King, they said. What did he really want? And I just looked at this wonderful class in Cambridge, and I looked, and I saw, oh my goodness, they're all sitting on the floor with their arms on each other, swaying back and forth, and their heads on their shoulders of every shade in the universe. And I said, 
His dream was this classroom. <laughs> you are his dream. And that's what I told him.